Welcome everyone to Friday's Living in Grace broadcast. I am Matthew Fisher. Let's go ahead and have a quick word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the words I speak are not my own, but the Father who dwells within me, He does the work. Father, reveal yourself to us. Give us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding of your word. I thank you that every satanic and demonic force is crushed under my feet. Let your word have free course and go forth with power and accuracy on today's broadcast. It's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we have been continuing to talk about the blessing of the Lord. And I said time and time again that this blessing of the Lord is, is a covenant word. So therefore we have been talking about the new covenant. And this is very important that we continue to discuss it because many, many, many Christians are more conscious or are more aware or have the mindset of the old covenant rather than they have the mindset or the awareness of the new covenant. See, the old covenant, it was all about their performance. It was all about the good things they could do. It was all about what they could do in their own ability to try to earn some kind of righteousness, to try to make themselves right with God, to try to get God to bless them. And that's why in the Old Covenant, even you see in the, um, you know, all throughout, you see it in the Bible, especially in, 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 in the Gospels, when it was almost had became some kind of competition to where, um, where I, I'm more religious than you, I keep more commandments than you, I've lived a morally, I've lived a morally better lifestyle than you, and that makes me have a better relationship with God. That, that makes me more righteous. That makes me more, more holy. It, it was about, it was a do mentality based upon what I've done in my own ability to become righteous or what they've come in their own ability to become whatever they were trying to be, I guess, to, to, to kind of make themselves look good in the sight of man. And that's why it became a competition because under that system you could look down on somebody else. You could talk, well, I don't do what he do and, and, and I'm, I'm more righteous than him. But we got to understand that's not what we're living under no more. We're living under a system now that's completely dependent upon what God has done for us. This is the system of grace. It's undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor. I am righteous not because I've ever done anything anything good or not because I followed a bunch of rules. I am righteous based upon the blood of Jesus Christ. I am, I am righteous based because Jesus was made to be sin that I might be the, made the righteousness of God in Him. That's my righteousness. My righteousness is not based about nothing I've done. I am blessed. Why? Because I've done so good, so many good things. No, I'm blessed because of Jesus Christ. This is not a competition. That's why he says, this is not of works, lest you could boast about it. If it was based upon what I've done, it was based upon my works, it was based upon my good moral lifestyle, I could boast about it. But this ain't what it's about. This new covenant is based upon Jesus Christ and Him only. It says all have, he, he, he said He placed every man under the category or under the label of sinner. No, I don't care how good you behaved. I don't care about all the do's and don'ts you followed. I don't care about how good, how, how the morally good lifestyle you live. I placed all under the category of sin. You were born into it through Adam. 
But every man, I don't care what you've done, I don't care how what your past looked like, I don't care how many sins you commit, I don't care how many drugs you smoked, how many drugs you sold, how many women you slept with, how many people you killed, how many things you stole, you can be made righteous through Jesus Christ and you didn't have to and you ain't going to have to do nothing to become righteous it's just going to say I believe in Jesus I receive my righteousness sir and that's all it is it ain't based upon what you've done so I can't look down on the next man be saying I've been made I made I'm more righteous than you because my righteous I didn't do nothing to get it Jesus gave it to me Jesus did every Jesus did something to get me this righteousness that's why it's called a gift. He did something to give it. He gave it to me. So how am I going to boast about a gift? How am I going to boast that I'm I'm more holy than you because I I prayed for four hours? How am I going How am I going to boast that I'm so anointed because I read my Bible for so many many hours? I mean, someone who someone who boasts about their works and, and they might be able to sound it's like they know a little something. You can probably believe that when they when that word is only coming out in the flesh, it ain't really coming out the spiritual realm. Why? How do I know? Because they boast about what they did to, to deserve it. They boasting about what they did to earn it. And the book of Galatians in the second chapter calls that the flesh. Anytime I'm thinking that I've started to, this is based upon my, my works, he calls it the flesh. But when I'm relying on the grace of God that says you're operating through the spiritual realm. So why do we preach this blessing? Because this blessing is not, God is not showing a respecter of persons in, in, in regards to this blessing. God is not showing a respecter of persons in regard to this grace. We are to preach this blessing. We are to preach this grace until the whole world receive it. I ain't, I ain't trying to keep this up for myself. I ain't trying to hide it in a box. I'm not trying to keep this all, all for me. Man, I'm trying to tell every person that I see that you can be blessed through Jesus Christ. That God is no longer holding your sins against you through Jesus Christ. This is the new covenant. And that's what it's all about. It ain't about, oh, uh, oh, I've done so many good things. I'm, I'm righteous because of my lifestyle I live. That ain't what it's about, man. You're back under the Old Testament. The Old Testament, everybody, man, I can tell you one thing. I, even before I got saved, I knew the Ten Commandments. They didn't mean nothing to me. I didn't care nothing about no Ten Commandments. Why? Because, because the, those things are obsolete. Those things don't matter no more. God left us with two. He said the first one, it, you, you ain't going to get the second until you can get the first one. The first, the, the, the commandment now is to believe in Jesus Christ. To believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, to, for your sins, that sin is no longer an issue with your life. Why? Because Jesus died for your sins and that God has risen him from the dead. That way you can be born again. That's it. That's, that's how you receive salvation. That's how you receive right standing with God. That's how you receive your righteousness. That's how you receive eternal life, everlasting life. That alone. And he said once you receive that, now you can walk in the second commandment, which is the law of love, which is to love as Jesus has loved us. But until you understand that Jesus has loved you, you're not going to be able to walk as Jesus has loved you because you're, you're going to try to do it in the flesh. You're going to say, oh, if I just, if I love so much, God will bless me. No, because it's not about God blessing you because you love so much. You, you said this love is produced out of what you've already received. That's the difference. That's the New Testament. That's the New Testament. I'm, this love that's in me that I'm walking in is produced of what I've already received. I'm not trying to manufacture it to get God to do nothing for me. I'm not trying to walk in love so God will bless me. That's not what the blessing is. And that's what we're going to get into right now. So basically I can just read this little scripture, say the prayer, because I mean I've said everything I need to say in regards to this right here. We're just going to read it, we're going to confirm a couple of things, and we're going to keep it moving. So it says, but as God, okay, sorry about that. It's 2 Corinthians, first chapter in the 18th verse. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. 
For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, who died for our sins, what, 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 was, what, what, what was bruised and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, by his stripes we were healed, took all upon our sins, rose from the dead, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the one who was dead but now lives forevermore, Jesus Christ, was preached among you by us, even by me, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, was not yea in nay, but in him was yes. In him was only yes. It's not that this, thing's no, this thing is no longer in question no more. My blessing is no longer in question. It's not, well, you know, he did, he did a partial job. Now I got some blessings. Now I got to work, this, work the rest of them out. Now I got to, you know, he saved me partially. Now I got to finish this work by, um, now I got to finish my salvation by doing a whole bunch of morally good things. Now I got to finish my salvation by keeping the Ten Commandments. Now I got to finish uh, the promise. Now I got to make sure I'm saved by praying for four hours every day. Now I got to make sure that I'm really saved by reading at least a chapter out of the Bible every day. I mean, like they say, there ain't nothing wrong with praying. There ain't nothing wrong with reading the Bible, but if you're reading the Bible to, 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 to follow, to, 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 to learn rules, you're not reading the Bible in its context. You're reading the Bible with an Old Testament mindset. If you're reading the Bible as a rule book of a list of do's and don'ts, you're reading that Bible from an Old Testament mindset. Now what do we read the Bible as? We read the Bible as a contract, as a covenant, as our inheritance. That's what the Bible is now for a New Testament believer. The Bible is our inheritance. What the Bible says we can have, we have through Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Right here in this word. It says, for all the promises of God. Does all mean all? Did he say some of the promises of God? No, he said all of the promises of God. All of them are not found in my works. They're not found in my ability. They're not found in my performance. All of the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. It ain't about me. It's about Jesus Christ. Why? Unto the glory of God. That God gets all the glory. So the Bible says, so if any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord. My boast can't be about what I've done to be blessed. The my boasting can't be about what I've done to be saved. The, the, my boasting can't be about what I've done to be righteous because I'm not. Number one, I'm not blessed because of myself. I'm blessed. I'm in covenant with God. I'm in righteousness. I'm in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. All I did was receive a gift. And now I'm enabled to live my life here on this earth. Empowered to succeed. Empowered to prosper in every arena of life. And in everything that I do. Why? Because I'm blessed. And my one of my best upon Jesus Christ. His blood which has established the covenant of my right standing with God. That's it. God is with me. He will never leave me forsake me. Someone says, what about when I sin? What about when I fall short? Well, what's God going to do? Is he going to leave me or forsake me? Now he's going to pick his hand out. He's going to lift you up. That's what he do when you sin. He don't, he don't run away. Your sin don't run God away. You're falling short. You're missing the mark. Don't, God, don't run God away from you. All it do is it enables grace to operate in your life. It says, I'm still here for you, baby. I'm still showing you that undeserved. That's why it's called undeserved favor. You didn't deserve it then. You don't deserve it now. But I'm still giving it to you. Woo! My God.
But I'm still giving it to you because you didn't earn it in the first place. You ain't earning it now. You didn't deserve it in the first place. You don't deserve it now. But because of Jesus Christ, I give it to you. You're blessed. You're righteous. You're in covenant with the almighty God creator of heaven and earth. And it ain't based upon you. It's based upon Jesus. But you are the beneficiary of what Jesus has done. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's Bible lesson. Continue to write this word in our hearts and in our minds and increase it within us. Continue to reveal to us the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of the love that you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Until next time on the Living in Grace broadcast, I am Matthew Fisher. God bless.